Okay, GE, I like it. What's up, what's up, what's up? Of course, it's me, your boy, Richie Rich, at Consumer Pond Support. Shoot another awesome video, cause that's what we do. Man, what's up, what's up, what's up? You know at Consumer Pond Support, we review appliances. So today we're gonna focus on a GE top low wash machine, 4.8 cubic feet, high efficiency, diamond gray top load washing machine with flex dispense and sanitized with Oxy, Oxy, of course, it's Energy Star as well. All right, we discussed that you can get it in the diamond gray, you can also get it in white, you can get it in the agitator or the impeller. We're gonna discuss that as we go into the lab, but of course, you already know this is just the intro portion of the video. So let's scroll down on the Home Depot website so that we can look at the product overview. So as far as the product overview, we got Tide Pods Dispense, the machine is a quiet wash. This is enjoy a much quieter wash thanks to innovative dynamic balancing technology that reduces vibration and noises. Man, it also have an added feature here where it has stain removal guide. Uh, no one is really having this feature here that I've seen on a washing machine only except for this GE model. You have settings that you can select for the stain removal guide. You can remove wine, you can select it for blood, um, you can select it for stains like grass stains and stuff like that as well. So that's an added feature that no one has except for the GE washing machine. You have your traditional deep fill. I know a lot of customers have been complaining about the amount of water that's inside the washing machine, but you do have the deep fill function that you can use that increase or customize your water level. So we like that as well. You have most multiple rinse options. You have automatic dispensing. Again, we talked about the sanitize with Oxy, which has removed 99.9% .9 of black of bacteria by using a um, cycle that boosts detergents effectiveness with the Oxy additive. All right, so that's another thing that we're gonna dive into. Of course, you get your auto soap, speed wash, 10 year warranty, cycle, uh, wash cycles, um, RPM speeds 800 and of course it's in the Energy Star appliance. Again, it's me, your boy. This is just the intro portion of the video and we're going to dissect this joint and we're going to come back and let you, know, get, let you guys know exactly how we feel about this appliance. But you already know what time it is. It's me, your boy, Richie Rich. At Consumer Appliance Report. You help me, I help you. We both help each other. Till next time, I'm out of here, man. Peace. guys enjoyed the intro to the GE top load wash machine so today we're going to focus on <clears throat> the functions and the features man what can it do what are some of the things that you're getting with this particular GE top load wash machine we're going to dive into that portion of the video man and dissect this joint up for you guys of course like we always do <clears throat> so right now we got the information uh, we're inside the owner's manual again. This is a GE product and we're going to allow the video to roll and we're going to dissect this joint as we do. This is the dark gray that you can see here as well. They also have it in white. So it's all up to you. Um, whatever color that you decide to go with. 
All right, so we're gonna start off with the control panel and we're just gonna allow it to sit there for a second. What you can see on here as well, so we're gonna go directly to the panel on here. So we know exactly which one it is that you get. And always remember, before you actually use the appliance, read the instructions, the safety instructions, everything that you need is inside the owner's manual, so you wanna do that as well. So if we're gonna zoom into this a little bit here, the model that we have is the one at the bottom that has, it says Energy Star, if you look here, H-E, and it has a deep fill as well. All right, so that's what that symbol's for, we have a deep fill. All right, so of course you have different buttons that you can actually choose. Let's dive into some of these um, uh, settings. We're just gonna go through them. We're not gonna go too in depth because we got a lot to cover in this portion of the video. All right, so A is your power button. B is your pause button. D, of course, indicates your dial and your settings that you can use as well. You have colors, which is normal. You have whites, delicates, jeans, active wear. That's for people like working out and all that stuff. You in the gym or you like running, quick wash. You have a setting specifically for towels slash sheets. You have a bulky for comforter. So you can wash, wash certain size comforters inside of this machine as well because it says it. Casual, sanitized with oxy. All right, you have also a deep clean and you have drain and spin. And uniquely on this particular model, we have the stain removal guide. All right, so on the stain removal guide, you can actually select the stains that's on your clothes. Get them GE. So you got tomato, wine, blood, grass, and dirt. All right, so we're going to dive into that a little bit as well. Of course, you have your digital display there that gives you the estimate time remaining. Of course, if it's paused, it'll let you know it's paused. If the controls are locked or the lid is locked or the spin stop, it will indicate and let you know that as well. All right, so we're gonna allow this video to roll a little bit so that we can get some more information. All right, so we're gonna pause it there. Of course, we're on the side where it says deep fill. All right, so this is the traditional um, way of filling up your washing machine with a lot of water. Remember back nowadays, you got the energy efficient machine that doesn't use enough water, not enough energy, but you can actually create or select the deep fill and that's something that we like. Um, you also have your temperatures for your water temperatures. You have hot, warm, colors, cool, cold, and your tap cold, all right? So you also have your soil level, which is extra heavy, which is the highest. You have heavy, normal, and light. Your spin has a max. You have more, you have normal, or no spin. You also have a warm and rinse, and you have an extra rinse button as well. You have a control lock. If you press the warm and rinse and extra rinse at the same time, it will lock your controls. So if you have uh, little kids that like playing with buttons, this prevents them from starting up the machine. You have your deep rinse. It says set with adding fabric softener as well. You also have the indicator that has um, the little star at the bottom that says hold for three seconds. All right, and you have your uh, my cycle, auto soak, delay wash, and sand. All right, so that's all up to you there as well. All right. Um, this is just a control panel. We're going to dive into the rest, the rest of this actual video here as well. So now I can actually zoom out. All right, so now we can actually move on here. Now right, let's see what we got. All right, let's get it. All right, so this is the settings that you can choose from, and we're going to dive into this portion of the video, man. We're going to jump to page seven. And let's get started. All right, so I want you guys to be able to see that as well as we get started. Um, so let's read. Um, start slash pause. It says press the start to begin the cycle. Note, unless bulky item cycles is selected, the lid must be closed for the washer to start the cycle. All right, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see that. It says if the washer is open, lid will scroll across the display during the load sensing portion of the cycle the lid will lock and sensing will scroll across the display all right so you want to look at that as well um, it says when loading cycle is complete the lid will unlock it says processing pause will unlock the lid by pressing pause will unlock the lid if locked at the at that time pause the cycle and start the indicator light with blink it says to continue the cycle, press start again. 
If water remains in the machine, select the drain and spin cycle to drain basket. Um, so that's good there. It says spin water out of the washer basket. It says no. It says machine will automatically cancel and drain when water is present and the lid is left open for 15 minutes of the unit is left in a pause state for 24 hours with the lid closed. Select cycle and press start to begin new cycle. All right, so we like those added features that they have on the unit as well. The machine is smart enough to automatically cancel and drain if water is present and the lid is left open for 15 minutes. All right, so we like those features because back in the day you wasn't getting that. That's not on the older machines. All right, so these machines are a lot smarter and that's one of the benefits of living in this day and age. Things are a lot smarter, so that's good. All right, so let's look at where it says display and status lights. Let's dive into that real quick. All right, it says display. It says the display shows the approximate time remaining until the end of the cycle. You can actually see in the video, I'm going to be selecting different portions or different cycles and you're going to see the different estimated time remaining. All right, it says the cycle time is affected by, let's focus on that. How long it takes the washer to fill, that's one. This depends on the water pressure in your home. So you wanna make sure you have adequate water pressure coming from your home to the machine. The size of the load being washed, and this is the big one. All right, you can deal with the water. If you have issues with your water, you can get that fixed. But a lot of the issues, a lot of problems stem from the amount of weight inside of the machine. All right, let me finish reading it as well. The size of the load being washed also significantly impacts the cycle time with large loads taking longer. So the heavier it is, the longer the cycle times are. But again, because it's absorbing a lot of the water, the machine has sensors. <clears throat> so it senses the load, it senses the rotation of the motor. So if, if it's spinning erratically or out of balance, the machine knows and it's gonna try to make several attempts to really try to make sure that the, the clothes are being clean and the, and the wash machine is not being damaged because it's spinning erratically. All right, because that can damage your, your home. If the machine is moving forward, it can pull against the water lines and snap them, cause water to leak all over the place when you're either if you're not home or if you're upstairs or wherever you are, if it's in the basement, that can affect your washing machine or, or damage your property. So you want to keep that in mind. All right, so let's talk about it. It says, the in, the in, this, it says in addition, this display will scroll the washer status. Balancing, see, this is the key part. It says start start off rebalancing cycle to redistribute clothes stops after rebalancing is complete all right it says delay when delay wash is initiated replaced with estimate time um, estimated time when cycle starts end of cycles end of current cycle it says fill all right so it lets you know that it's filling as well or end of cycle it says we'll scroll across delay uh, display for the first 45 seconds of fill Afterwards, the estimated end of cycle time is displayed. Our right, H2O supply, it says cannot sense water level, valves possibly turned off. You get that as well. It says LID, which this is cycle stop being because the lid is open. So we'll close the lid. Sensing, it says sensing out of balance condition, like, we, like I just discussed before. Waterproof items. Um, low or, or load size and, and tight before and doing fill. All right, so your machine is smart enough to sense these different things, man. So you got to give it the credit and you got to help it out by loading the clothes properly. Of course, we talked about the pause. It says pause because the uh, cycle pause because the start slash pause button was pressed and the washer was set to pause. Press start button again to restart the cycle. All right, so we love that there. Then of course you have cycle status lights that you can use as well. So I'm gonna let some of this play so you can actually see the different cycles that when I'm pressing those. And you can see the different temperatures that's already preset to some of them so that you can actually just start it automatically or you can customize it to whatever it is that you want, it's up to you. All right, so you wanna keep that in mind as well. All right, it's just um, uh, status light shows whether the washer is in pre-wash, delay, fill, soak, wash rinse or spin portion of the cycle note cycle status lights vary by model all right so that's another thing there it says if an out of balance condition is detected by the washer the spin light will blink during the remaining portion of the cycle and will stay illuminated for a short time after cycle completion 
When this occurs, the washer is taking actions to correct uh, to correct the out of balance condition and complete the cycle normally. In some cases, so let me dive into this right here. All right, so it says, in some cases, the washer may be able to balance the load and spin out to full speed. If you notice the loads is more wet than normal at the end of the cycle, redistribute the load evenly in the wash basket and run in a run and drain and spin cycle. All right, so on this particular model, I've had issues with this before where a customer had it where it wasn't spinning out the clothes properly. We tried telling them to redistrib redistribute the clothes, <clears throat> load it properly, that would help a lot but it just it just didn't work out and we had to replace a part four because she called us back within a week to let us know that it wasn't working all right so you want to keep that in mind as well we have feature status lights indicator we talk about the pause we talk about controls lock lid lock some models come with the wi-fi on some models it says it will display when washers connected via wi-fi it says it will blink when you are attempting to connect your device to your home wi-fi spin speed indicates wash basket is coasting to a stop fully spin it said let me read that again indicates washer basket is coasting to a stop fully spin following spin it said lid will not unlock until basket has fully come to a stop right so you can't unlock it until the motor and the controllers could understand communicate and say that the the the, uh, the, the basket stops spinning all right so that's the benefit there um, consumer health indicator uh, we talked about the spin light blinking we've talked about the h2o water not supplying we got the cancel and the lid so if you want to go in depth and read that this is up to you as well you can do that um, however you would like man so that will be able to help you there if you want to all right so so that's cool there so we're gonna allow this to, to to rock and roll man so that you guys will be able to see that one of the benefits that we like on this particular model is that it has the stain removal guide so before we get into the wash cycle and anything else um actually we can probably um, i'll do the stain removal guide and just dive into that real quick all right so here we go started and this is on some models it's not on every model all right, it says stain removal guide on some models. It says the stain remover removal guide feature, uh, let me tap on that. It says, um, allows you to indicate what stains are on the garments in your load. An initial water fill is performed at a temperature tailored to the stain type selected and to the amount which enables a concentrated cleaning step. A stain scrubbing period followed by an active soak is conducted to effectively treat the stain. The additional water is added to the selected temperature and the wash phase is conducted for the cycle selected. All right, so I like that there. So I'm gonna let you guys be able to see that as well. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. All right, so it says to use the stain removal guide, it says select the desired wash cycle. Of course, you can select between tomato, wine, blood, grass, and dirt. All right, so you have that feature there. Um, so let's dive into this um, as a little bit more. It says to select a different stain, press the stain removal guide button until the desired stain to be removed is lit. To turn off stain removal guide, press until no indicated lights are illuminated. All right, so that's it. Note, it says the soil and temperature levels will be changed to match the recommended default setting for each stain type, turning off the stain removal guide will return the settings to default. All right, so let's see what some of the settings are. It says for blood, recommended temperatures or treatment is cold and cool. Um, it says the stain, this is for blood, sweat, body fluids, and urine. It says for best results before placing in washer, rinse in cold water, pre-treat stain with liquid detergent or stain remover product. All right, so that's one of the things I was concerned about where you're able to pre-treat it before then or you just dump it into the machine. So right now it's explaining to you that you can do that, it's best to do that, then you'll be able to select whatever setting that you want as well. All right, just to help the machine out. All right, grass stain, cold water, dirt, you have cool slash warm, tomato, cool slash warm, wine is cool slash warm. So let's go into wine because I see where it says wine, soda, Kool-Aid, tea, coffee, juice, beer. 
All right, it says pre-treat with mixed, all right, so it says for the best result before placing the washer. Pre-treat with mixture of oxy product and cool water. Add oxy product along with detergent in the washer. All right, so it depends on how you want to resolve the issue as well. It's telling you what's best before you place it inside the machine. All right, so again, you, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you guys will be able to see that as well. And if you wanna pause it, you can see that. It says recommended temperatures, I'm at the bottom. It says for optimal stain removal performance, adjust temperature selection to suit load being washed. Ensure stain is completely removed after wash cycle and before placing in dryer. Says very tough stains may require a second treatment. All right, gotta keep that in mind. Um, so I'm glad we're able to dissect this owner's manual so we know exactly what we are getting ourselves into. All right, so we're gonna rock with that for a second so we can roll. I like that, that's pretty cool. All right, some other ones you can have pre-treat or soaking using water station. One have detergent plus water or water. So it depends on the model that you have. Again, if you have this particular model, you can actually pause it and you can just read it yourself because we're just gonna focus on the model that we have. Uh, but again, there's different models depending on the, um, the variation of the machine they make. All right, so just keep that in mind. Let's rock. Let's rock, let's rock, let's rock. So we talked about we was gonna go into different cycle settings. All right, so um, we can actually go back a little bit when we're talking about the cycle settings um, so we can go into the cycle chart and that's one of the things I love to get into because it helps the customer understand how to load the machine what's best to put in that particular cycle so that you can use the machine to benefit you all right so we love that all right so wash the cycle cycles select the knob all right so that's the select the knob you select the cycles this is items to wash so let's talk about the colors. It says cycle for normal, regular, or typical use for washing up to a full load of normally sold cotton clothing. All right, wash temperature is warm. That's no, that's the, the preset setting. Soil level is normal. Um, spin is also normal. It says optional available, options available. The stain removal guide, warm rinse, auto soak, deep rinse, delay wash, extra rinse, power pre-wash. Um, cycle details, it says, let me zoom in a little bit more for this joint real quick. All right, it says cycles for normal, regular, or typical use for washing up to a full load for normal soil, cotton clothing. Choose the heavy or extra heavy soil level selection and warm or hot water temperature selection as appropriate for your clothes load for, uh, a, for a higher degree of cleaning it says incorporates multiple stage fills and wash periods to provide optimum fabric cleaning all right so it depends on what it is that you're washing as well you got to consider that and that's one of the things we love about the cycle guide it teaches you what to put it in there because again you can overload the clothes and that's where a lot of the issues come from all right um you have your casuals casual clothes light soil office wear stuff like that um, you can use that. Delicates, lingerie, and special care fabrics with light soil. You have your active wear as well, right? Medium to lightly sold athletic wear items for um, technical or synthet <clears throat> synthetic fabrics. All right, so we like that. I like the active wear because I'm active, so that helps with workout clothes and stuff like that, how to really wash those. All right, so the wash temperature is warm, soil level is normal, speed is, speed is normal, because normally your, your active wear is real light. They're not really bulky or heavy like that anyway. All right, so um, cycle details, it says cycle details, designed for care of medium to slightly soil active wear. Athletic wear and technical fabrics incorporates a dual stage wash period to effectively treat body soils and odors. I like that. It says using the heavy duty cycle for heavily sold sports clothing constructed of sturdy fabric. All right, so I like that. Because again, you know working out, man, you develop some odor, you start to smell. So you really, especially underneath your armpits, man, you gotta get that stuff out of there. Um, so that will help you a lot with that there. So we really like that. You have your quick wash, you have a draining spin that you can utilize as well. So let's talk about that. Because a lot of customers, just in my opinion, they don't really use the additional options that's available um, to them on their machine. We use, a, again, the old machine, like how we had the one we had prior, and we use the same features on the new one. So this is why you, I have to get used to using your appliance 
so they can it can be tailored to whatever it is that you're washing so it can best help you all right the better you understand the machine the better off that you are all right so that's where we are it says utilize a high speed spin speed to extract water from wet items for items that need to be rinsed select the deep rinse option when using this cycle all right so you do have a deep rinse option there all right let's go to the other part sanitize with oxy so we're going to dive into that a little bit there as well that's another cycle it says heavily soiled color fast items sanitize with oxy water temperature is hot soil level is extremely heavy spin is more um, options available it says warm rinse auto soap deep rinse delay wash extra rinse all right so the cycle details is a cycle uses a initial lower water fill for super concentrated high temperature sanitization followed by a heavy wash step a pump purge and deep rinse is incorporated in removing contaminants see additional details and certifications below smart dispense not available on this cycle all right so loving that there you have jeans you have jeans that you can actually put in as well all right we like that um you have deep clean deep clean sturdy fabric with heavy to medium soil um of course the temperature setting is warm soil level is heavy spin is normal um you have additional options you can choose as well all right incorporates multiple steps as far as the cycle details um wash periods combined with extended wash periods to effectively clean heavy to medium soil sturdy fabrics all right bulky items i'm gonna really discuss that because again you can actually put um comforters in here it says water resistance bedding and bulky items such as large coats mattress pads and bath mats so I'm, i was never really a fan of the bath mats inside the washing machine you want to be careful with the material if it shreds a lot that's going to affect your washing machine because it's going to shred and it's going to go inside your drain pump and go inside your motor then you're going to need a service technician to come out sometimes to clean out the drain pump because it's clogged up and it cannot drain all right so you want to keep that in mind depending on the bath mats that you're using all right um, as far as the water temperature warm soil level normal spin duration that's normal as, as well and you have options available stain removal guide deep fill warm rinse soak deep rinse delay wash extra rinse power pre-wash and it says cycle details provides a detailed fill slash max fill wash level to wash bulky and waterproof ice items also incorporates a deep fill rinse to effectively rinse bulky items and a low spin um, appropriate for these items only use the cycle for water resistance bedding or bulky items all right love that there as well towels of course use the towel settings for towels that's one of the things um but it also said on here let me just read the cycle description or cycle details again you can pause this if you like so you can see it it says cycle details washing towels or sheets using a higher water level is effectively clean these items it is recommended that towels and sheets be washed separately all right keep that in mind separate it for best care and washing performance for waterproof bedding covers use bulky items all right so separate the towels and the sheets you cannot mix them it makes them heavier towels are already heavy anyway because it absorbs a lot of the water so you want to make sure you just put the towels the towels wash towels and then of course um, do the sheets separately all right whites you know you can wash your whites man if you don't know how to wash whites by now please <laughs> yeah you know i'm saying so whites and whites and that's where we are as far as this portion of the video all right so we talked about several things as well we talked about the oxy and we went dive into that already um so we didn't dissect a lot of this stuff man um the oxy clean again it's it's something that we can discuss a little bit on here because it's a special feature um i'm just going to read a little bit of what it says and we can actually move on it says the sanitize with oxy cycle when using the oxy additive along with your detergent is designed to remove 99.9% .9 of bacteria found in home laundry. It says measure the detergent and the oxy products carefully, using the amounts appropriate for a large heavy soil load in a top load washer. Follow the detergent and the oxy product label instructions for the sanitize with oxy cycle only. 
add the clothes first and then place the detergent and oxy product directly on top of the load. The washer hot water supply connection must provide a minimum of 120 degrees Fahrenheit to ensure the effectiveness of this cycle. All right, so cool. Love that there as well. All right, so we can dive into that and let this joint roll, see what else we got out here, man. All right, so we talked about the stain removal so we can move on from there. Um, and one of the things we can talk about here is it's basically like loading your clothes, right? So that's your agitator inside the motor there, right? The biggest issue is loading your clothes. All right, so we can actually um, dive into that some. All right, as we dissect this joint. All right, so let's see, page number 16. All right, so um, auto load sensing. All right, so let's describe it. We'll talk about that loading. It says this determines the correct um, agitate profile and agitate, agitate duration and amount of water suited to the size and type of load. This is placed in the washer. The washer will not start the wash cycle or fill with water if the lid is open when the lid is closed the, the machine is able to begin filling with water in order to sense the load size all right this is automatic load sensing initiate a spin at the beginning of the cycle this is normal operation note this is a high efficiency washing machine the system requires less water while providing effective cleaning cleaning action you may notice the water level is lower than lower than on your previous washer. This is normal for a high efficiency washer. That's what I keep telling y'all. All right, pre-treat. Place laundry pre-treats such as oxy products directly in the bottom of the wash basket before loading clothes. It says do not use liquid Clorox bleach and laundry pre-treatments such as an oxy product in the same wash load. All right, proper use of detergent. So we can describe that as well. We can probably just read that and then we go into the dispenser a little bit as well. Using too little or too much detergent is a common cause of laundry problems. It says use less detergent if you have a soft water, a smaller load, or a lightly soiled load. For spots, it says apply pre-treatment to items as recommended on the product label. Application should be made in the basket to prevent Overspray, which may cause the coloring or the lid or graphics to fade. Place detergent packets in the laundry pack dispenser or on some models or the bottom of the wash basket before adding clothes. All right, it says GE Appliance recommends the use of high efficiency detergent such as Tide HE Turbo in your energy efficient washer. HE detergents are formatted, formulated to work with low water wash and rinse system. HE detergent reduce the oversudging pro problems are commonly associated with regular detergents. So when you're using your high efficiency detergent, it has to have the HE logo on it with these new models, new products. Um, again, it reduces the soap suds because soap suds does cause issues in your machine. So you want to keep that in mind as well. I've noticed customers like using the natural brand or natural detergents or an off-brand. You just wanna be careful with it. If you find one that works for you, then great. Of course, make sure it has the HE logo. If not, then you might have to stay with your traditional brands to wash your clothes. So you wanna keep that in mind as well, all right? So that's one of the things that we like. Sorting wash loads, again, sort by colors, uh, soil level, fabric type, um, whether the fabric produced lint, stuff like that, or lint, collect uh, collects lint wash lint it says wash lint producers such as cotton towels and socks separate from lint collect collectors including synthetic garments and dress pants all right so you want to be careful with that and of course it has a warning and again you can pause that so you can see that but we're going to really focus on the loading uh loading the washer and that's key that's his work this is real big it says load your dry items loosely in the washer basket for best results load items evenly and loosely around the outside of the basket it says fill in towards the center on a larger load to add items after washer has started press start slash pause if the lid is locked it says 
wait until the lid lock indicator on the display is no longer illuminated before attempting to open the lid. It says lift the lid and submerge additional items around the outside of the basket. Close the lid and press start to resume. Adjust load side selection and or use deep fill option if necessary. All right, note, some cycles are used, I use a two stage wash fill. First, right, the first stage will have a lower water level than the second stage. This is normal operation. All right, do not place the large items such as sheets, blankets, and towels across the infuser. Load them around the outside of the basket. Again, when you're loading your clothes, especially with the even if it's a lower agitator or the impeller whichever one you have load it around the basket not on top of it all right so keep that in mind um load them around the outside the basket number two says do not put lawn or sofa cushions into the washer as they are too big to move again you got to focus on the weight everything has to do with weight if your clothes is too heavy and it absorb a lot of water it is too heavy for the machine to spin it so it's not going to wash properly and it's not going to spin out your clothes properly and it's still going to be wet because it's too heavy so what they're showing you here on the diagram is the water level in comparison to the clothes level how much more it should be in the difference between the two all right, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that. Again, this is going to be in the description box when we put it in the owner's manual. This is stuff that you can use for your benefit. All right, average load size, you can see that. Average medium load and your average load. All right, so you want to make sure you load it according to the water level. It's not supposed to be that much difference in between the two. But again, for you to use it properly so you don't have a lot of issues down the line, then you want to do it according to what is recommended. All right, as long as you're doing it that way, no problem. And again, we already discussed some models come with Wi-Fi and all that other stuff as well. So if you're interested in getting to really do that, you can focus on that too as well. All right, so that's that's it there. All right, uh, we can actually dive into the dispenser a little bit. Um, it depends on the model that you have. Um, again, I'm not going to go too in depth, but you can pause it if you want to see it. Some of them come with the smart dispense, right? So you can see that smart dispenser. All right, depending on the model, and it has the model number there as well, you can dive into that. I'm gonna let that sit, so if you wanna pause it, you can read it and take a look at it, depending on the model you have. All right, also you have the liquid bleach. All right, so it depends on what it is that you have here, depends on the model. All right, so if I don't see anything else dealing with the liquid bleach, I might come back to that. All right, so let's look at the model that we have here, right, getting started right here. It says HE should he detergent all right let's get into that let me zoom in a little bit more he detergent should be added to the right side of the dispenser drawer follow the detergent manufacturer's recommendation for the correct amount of detergent based on the load size taking care to add detergent to the right compartment do not overfill or dilute the detergent as this can result in additive being dispensed prematurely in the wash cycle. Your option selection will determine when detergent is automatically dispensed at its optimum time in the wash cycle for optimum performance, especially when selecting cooling temperature and in cold water, cold weather climates, place powdered HE detergent, detergent directly on top of the load. Note, single dose laundry packets should not be added to the detergent dispenser as they will not dispense properly put packets in the laundry pack dispenser cup and we're going to describe that as well all right so we got the image showing you put it on the right side and of course you gotta um i'm gonna have to let the video play so that we can talk about that as a little bit i was supposed to let that rock but let's make it happen here um that's of course is the basket that's spinning um so i just want to show us the detergent bam here we go right here we can pause it and let it sit it says detergent right on the right side you got fabric softener on the left you have your max and of course you have your tied pods or whatever pods you like to use you want to put them in there as well but we about to discuss that right now all right detergent packs packets laundry packs should be added to the laundry pack dispenser cup follow the detergent manufacturer's recommendation for the correct number of detergent packets for your wash load 
Do not add more detergent packets than recommended as this can result in residential detergent, residual detergent being left over at the end of the cycle, right? Your option selection will determine when detergent is automatically dispensed at its optimum time in the wash cycle. All right, cool. No, we recommend using the use of high efficiency or HE laundry packs such as Tide Pods or Gain Flames. All right, some detergent packs may dispense completely at very cold temperatures or in the um, delicate cycle. In this, in these cases, you may use a warmer temperature setting, or excuse me, in rare cases, remove the outer cup to use the secondary large chamber to dispense harder to dissolve detergent packs. So it all depends on the detergent packs and how they dissolve. All right, so you have to keep that stuff in mind. It's not just about going out and buying a specific pack. All right, so let's talk about it. Um, the fabric softener, all right, and conditioner dispenser. It says liquid fabric softener slash conditioner should be added to the left side um, of the dispenser drawer. Follow the liquid fabric softener slash conditioner manufacturer's recommendation for the correct amount of softener conditioner based on the load size. Taking care to add softener conditioner to the left compartment, do not overfill or dilute softener slash conditioner as this can result in additive being dispensed prematurely in the cycle. Your option, this is your option selection will determine when liquid fabric softener slash conditioner is automatically dispensed at its optimal time in the rinse cycle. Note, fabric softener crystals should not be added to the dispenser drawer as they will not dispense properly. All right, so you got the picture on both sides on the owner's manual, and of course you have the video to watch as well. Then we have your liquid bleach dispenser. All right, so we can actually see what we got there. I don't know if we, um, I might need to go back to that. All right, and of course you can actually close the dispenser there as well. That's that there. Um, I might have to go back. Yeah, I'm gonna go back a little bit where we talk about a dispenser um, in the video right there, all right? So liquid Clorox bleach should be added through the bleach dispenser in the front left corner. Follow bleach manufacturer's recommendation for the correct amount of liquid Clorox bleach based on the load size. Taking care to not, uh, taking care to not apply or spill it directly on clothing. Do not use li liquid Clorox bleach and laundry pre-treat pre -treat treatments such as an oxy product in the same wash, the wash bowl. All right, so that's where we are there. So um, cool, you can watch the video, you can see that as well. Um, let me zoom out of this joint real quick, that's page number 15. So that's where we are as far as the um, the functions and the features here. We're just wrapping up a little bit to see if there's anything that we might miss that we can discuss. All right, so this is the um, GE top low washer there. All right, so we're gonna let that rock for a second. And of course, that's the liquid bleach, so I was a little bit ahead of my uh, behind, but we got that. That's for the latch, for you to lock the door, all right? And of course, this is your lid that you can close down there. Um, but we can just stop it and pause it there. Um, just to scroll down a little bit to see if there's anything that we can find. You can also care and clean certain portions of your machine, right? The dispenser drawer, you can do that, right? Um, if you're going on vacations, you right, you can actually um, winterize the the the, um, the wash machine. That's also in your owner's manual as well. Installation, um, all that stuff that you can get into troubleshooting tips before you call for service this is something that i recommend that customers look at before they call just to make sure it's an issue with the machine all right so man so outside of that of course man and then of course you got the warranty there we already discussed that it's me your boy richie rich man we out here man describing this functions and features man breaking down this appliance so we're gonna move on to the next portion of this video man you know we out of here man peace all right, so for this portion of the video, we're gonna focus on the price. How much it's gonna cost you. Might cost you a little, might cost you a lot. Either way, <clears throat> it's gonna cost you. So for this portion of the video, man, <clears throat> we're on the Best, Best, Best Buy website, and we're looking at the white. So this is the GE 4.8 cubic feet 
high efficiency top load washer with white um, which is white with with silver backsplash all right so you're looking at seven hundred and sixty four dollars and ninety nine cent as far as the price um, you can finance this appliance as well but again this portion of that is up to you we do not instruct you in any form or any way um, but you're looking at forty two dollars and fifty uh, forty two dollars and fifty cents for the next 18 months if you decide that you want to finance this um, wash machines um, of course, on the price, we like to show you a little bit of video uh, pictures so that you'll be able to see exactly what it is that you're getting as well. Um, we're going to look at a different color, which is the diamond gray, and see how much the price is for that. Of course, it's going to change depending on the color. And always keep in mind the model number changes as well depending on the actual color of it. So the white ends with a WS. And I'm waiting for my computer to load up, of course, so we'll see. Um, the different um, in the, mo the difference in the model number. So the diamond gray um, ends with DG for diamond gray. So you're looking at the price right now is eight hundred fifty-four dollars and ninety-nine cents. Of course, the eighteen-month financing has changed. It went up from forty to four from forty-two dollars and fifty cents to forty-seven dollars and fifty cents. All right. So if you want to get this at your local Best Buy. Again, keep in mind when you're looking for an appliance or shopping for a particular appliance, you want to make sure that they have it in your area. And if they don't have it in your area, in your area, how long it's going to take for them to uh, get the appliance. All right. So you want to keep that in mind. So let's go to Lowe's. You know, Lowe's is always high. Lowe's is not really giving you anything or any or any discounts at all. So for the diamond gray, the price has changed for Lowe's. It's nine forty nine. Um, it says your estimated price is $8.99 with up to $50 in rebate. All right, so depending on where you are. But right now for the diamond gray on lows is $9.49. Um, no sales, no no special buys or anything from lows. Let's see the difference in the price for the white. So for the white, okay, that's $806. All right, so you can save $43. Um, as you can see in the video ends August the 11th again depending on the area that you're in um, you can also save five percent if you're eligible for purchasing made with your Lowe's Advantage card so it drop it to about 765.70 all right and remember all that is up to you so we're going to dive into the Home Depot website now to see how much it is all right so right now Home Depot has it at a really good price again this is the white so the white is roughly about 800 bucks when you round it up so right now it's at 764 originally it was at 849 and you're saving 85 dollars so you're getting 10 percent off the payment plan is a little bit different for the Home Depot of course um, it's 128 dollars for the next six months and this is for the white Let's look at the diamond gray to see if that changes in the price, which we know it will. So you're looking at $854. Originally $949, they're saving you 10%, which is about $95. Of course, the payment plan has went up. So you're looking at for the next six months, if it's something that you've decided, it's $143 for the next six months. And don't forget, you can actually get this appliance in the actuator and the impeller. It depends on which store that you go to. I did speak to a rep in um it was in lows so um, there's certain lows that might carry this particular one or they might not or you might have to wait a few days so um when you're shopping for an appliance you want to do your research and check for availability all right so we want to stress that as well all right so the last one that we normally go to you know they always say don't ever go to the dealer man because uh they always expensive yeah so when you're going to the manufacturer it could be expensive as well all right so we're on the ge website right now let's see what the prices are um you, again roughly you're still spending around the same price 949 for the diamond gray um that's the price for the 4.8 cubic feet um i don't see any special offers but it says see special offers you can click on that um depending on where you are no special offers here no rebates um so let's go into the gray and see what um, as far as the the white because we just finished the gray all right so the white according to this is 849 all right so again there's no special price no special offers you're gonna be paying if you purchase it from ge for eight for, uh, for 849 dollars all right so you can shop around again this is why we stress do the research um try to use as, as many sources that you can so that you could uh get the best price for you but as as of right now we can say this appliance is roughly between 800 
and about a thousand dollars so that's how we're going to round it off depending on if you get any special buys if you get 10 percent off if you finance it it's going to be a little bit different stuff like that as well but this is the price portion of the video and you know of course it's me your boy richie rich man and we're going to dissect this joint man and find out what else we can find with this appliance peace all right so for this portion of the video we're going to focus on the warranty 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 the manufacturer warranty what are you getting when you purchase this appliance we're not talking about an extended warranty at all we're talking specifically from ge themselves what are you getting when you purchase this appliance all right so right now we're going to use the home depot website scroll down all the way to the bottom and go to where it says warranty on here so we'll know exactly what we are getting all right so let's read it let's get into it real quick so it says ge appliance washer limited warranty geappliance.com it says all warranty services provided by our factory service centers or authorized customer care technician to schedule service it says visit us at geappliance.com slash service or call ge appliance of course you have the number there 1-800-432-2737 it says please have your serial number and your model number available when calling for service. That's extremely important. So when you purchase an appliance, you probably want to write it down in your owner's manual. Do not go with the one that's on the actual owner's manual because there's different models and it doesn't give you the full model number. So you want to make sure you uh, look at the machine, get the model number off of it so you know exactly what it is because your technician needs it in order to find any parts for it and as you can as you can um, see what I, what I just read GE also needs it as well um, so it says service your appliance may require the use of onboard data port for diagnostics it says this gives a GE appliance factory service technician the ability to quickly diagnose any issues with your appliance and helps GE appliance improve its products by providing GE appliance with information on your appliance it says if you do not want your appliance data to be sent to GE appliance please advise your technician not to submit the data to GE appliance at the time of service all right so you do have that option as well like I said a lot of these appliances are extremely smart so a lot of customer service or the technician that's on the phone that you call can diagnose the issue over the phone without actually being in your home all right so that's one of the benefits there but again you do have the choice if you want to or not so that is up to you it says for the period of one year it says we will replace so let's focus on a one-year manufacturer warranty it says any factory specified part for the washer which fails due to a defect in materials or workmanship it says during this limited one year warranty we will also provide free of charge right it says all labor and related service to replace the defective part all right so that's pretty common one year manufacturer warranty no woo -woo, nothing new um, that's you you have to get that all right so let's focus on the next one you're also getting a 10-year warranty it says the motor if it should fail to a uh, defect in materials or workmanship during this additional nine-year limited warranty you will be responsible for any labor and related service cost all right so the motor has a 10-year warranty on it just a part no labor all right so they're going to save you some money on the part all right so we'll let you know ex exactly how much the part is going to be in the parts portion of this video but right now we're focusing on the warranty and of course they always will have stuff they do that they do not cover so if you want to just pause this video you can actually see that as well a couple of the stuff that we always talk about it says service trips to your home to teach you how to use their product we already know off top man they are not going to instruct you how to use the appliance you, you better know how to use the appliance yourself or you can always watch our videos we'll help you out tremendously and figuring out how to use the appliance and this is what we're here for all right um, products which are defective or broken or which are working as described in the owner's manual when you're using your appliance you also want to remember the operation of it different sounds that it might make because it's very important that you do not call GE to come out because if it's something that is normal operation according to the owner's manual then of course they're gonna charge you all right so you want to be careful with that um, damage caused after delivery all right so you want to make sure whoever deliver it that delivers it if you find out that it's damaged you want to make sure that you contact um, the company that comes out so that you'll be able to get that squared away all right product not accessible to provide required service all right so you got to make sure 
that the technician has room to do his job, his or her job, you gotta make sure if it's in a space where it's tough or hard to get the appliance to work on, that is gonna be a problem, all right? So they're not covering that. All right, um, exclusion of implied warranties, all that stuff, you guys can read it as well. And it says in the United States, and of course, if you're in Canada, they have different um, limited warranty extensions and stuff like that as well. And if you wanna purchase an extended warranty, we always stress, do your research. You could probably get it from either Lowe's, Home Depot, or Lowe's. Um, Home Depot, Lowe's, Best Buy, wherever you get it from. You can also get it from the manufacturer as well, but do your research enough so you know what's best for you, because it's all about you know it's all about you all right so you want to keep that in mind so as far as this warranty you're getting a one-year manufacturer warranty and a 10-year warranty just on the motor the part alone the labor would not be covered all right but the one year covers both parts and labor all right so this is just the warranty portion of the video man we are out of here man of course it's me your boy we're gonna finish up this joint as we continue what we do in the lab peace all right, so for this portion of the video, we're gonna focus on the parts. Man, how much is gonna cost you to repair your appliance when it does break? All right, so that's one of the issues that we like to focus on a little bit, just to give you some extra information or just something extra to think about when you do purchase your appliance because you are gonna get it fixed at least once or twice. All right, so we wanna make sure that we instruct you properly just to give you an idea on how much is gonna cost you. All right, so right now we're on the Sears Parts Direct website. I've inserted the model number, and this model number is for the, the gray one, all right? So it's not the white, but it's the gray. So it depends on the color. It makes a difference in the part. It changes the prices as well, so you want to consider that. All right, so we're right now where it says tub and motor, all right? So we're just going to roll into that and see what we got here as well, just to give you an actual picture of what it is that we're looking at. First of all, you have your tub cover, you have your actuator, you have suspensions that's here. Um, um, your tub, it says not in stock, so if you happen to need the outer tub, it's not in stock, so it's not a part that you can actually get. So unfortunately, if you have a hole in it or it's leaking, you need a new one, you mu you're gonna have to get a new appliance because it's not in stock. All right, so you have your transmission or your gear case, um, different stuff like that, your motor that has the 10-year warranty, you have a drain pump. So we're going to dive into this and discuss some of the common issues that normally goes well, um, that normally goes bad as well. And for this particular video, the estimate is going to be our labor is 150, plus it's going to be a slight markup on the part, and we'll let you know that as well. All right, so let's go. Main harness, um, which is the first one that we see here not a common issue that's number 100 but if you happen to need the harness on this particular model you're looking at 98 dollars and 76 cents all right so that's not a common issue that does not happen often but it can your washer um wash plate can be a common issue what i'm noticing from different models that's using these is that the screw would either wear out or the agitator on the middle portion of it will wear out and it comes up and then you're gonna have to get it replaced all right, so right now you're looking at $28.99. So if you happen to need this part, we're going to say roughly you're going to spend $50 for the part. Labor is $150, so you're looking at right about $200 as far as for the washer wash plate. All right, the price is subject to change as well, and it's just an estimate depending on the company that does come out. So you want to factor that stuff in. All right, so I'm just going to go back real quick so that we can dive into this joint. All right. Um, let's see. All right, so we're scrolling down. So we're looking at the platform transmission assembly, and that's number 320. So I'm just going to show you guys. This is the main transmission 320 that allows the unit to agitate and wash. This is a common issue on the models that look similar to this. You have a Whirlpool that looks similar to this. Um, you have a Kenmore that, uh, that's similar to this. You have a Maytag that's similar to this. I'm just gonna be honest, this transmission is trash. 
Um, it gives a lot of issues, a lot of problem. It does leak. The bearings on it goes bad quite often. So there's times when your machine where it doesn't spin out the clothes properly over a certain period of time. It might not agitate. Like again, it might leak and stuff like that. So as far as a common issue, this transmission kit is a common issue. So right now you're looking at two hundred and twenty nine dollars and forty cents, right? So if we mark this up, let's say the part is three hundred. Labor, you're looking at 150. Right now, you're looking at at least 450 bucks. Possibly, I'm gonna say at least 500 to repair this particular unit because it's a transmission. The job that it takes and the time that it takes to really um, finish a job or do a job like this, it's gonna cost you a little bit extra. So the price of the labor is gonna go up, and uh, and also you gotta factor in the price of the part. We're just doing a slight markup. It's two hundred and twenty-nine dollars, and we just marked it up to three hundred bucks. All right, so you're gonna spend spend well over three hundred bucks for the part, and you're gonna spend well over one hundred and fifty bucks for the labor. So again, I would say roughly between five hundred, so between uh, about five hundred bucks. I would go with that. All right, at least on average. All right, so you want to consider that, and that's not a part that's covered for an extended warranty or anything like that. It only has the one-year manufacturer warranty, unfortunately. All right, but it is a common issue, man. It is a common issue. All right, so the basket, which is number 316, um, not a common issue. Not a common issue to get the basket replaced um, on this particular model or any models at all. The basket is pretty sturdy. They last a pretty long time. But if you happen to need one, you're looking at $260.04. All right, so it's not a common issue, so there's no need for us to really go through that. Um, you have the model shifter. Um, that's number 325 at the bottom here um, so this is a common issue common issue um, for the washing machine uh, shifter not to operate properly it would get stuck it's a real small motor that shifts from wash to spin so I don't really want to get too technical but that's basically what happens is switch one way for you to agitate and switch the other way for the tub um, to spin so when you're looking at this part you're looking at 6196 Roughly, let's mark that up to about $100 for the part. Labor, you're looking at $150, so you're looking at at least $250 bucks to repair, to replace your motor shifter. And it is a common issue as well. All right, so I don't want you guys to forget that. All right, so let's rock. Let's see what else. What else they got? So we talked about a few of the parts already. Um, let's see what else they might have on here as well. Clutch, tub cover. Um, again, not a common issue. Suspensions are a common issue as well. All right, so you're looking at 1866. So we can actually look at the picture up here. Um, this is where the suspensions are, which is 415 and 415. Um, on this particular model or models that are similar to this, the suspensions wear out. Um, it can cause your, your washing machine to, um, to bounce all over the place, make loud noises when it's spinning. So you want to keep that in mind. Um, so yes, it is a common issue. So if you happen to need a suspension, it's 1866. Most of the wash machines have four suspensions in it. So it's two in the front, two in the front, then two in the back. So you're looking at $20 a piece times four, you know that's 80 bucks. So let's say it's $100 for the whole entire part. Labor, you're looking at 150. Um, so again, you're looking at about 250 as far as price. But again, it's, it's subject to, to change on a markup on a price they might charge you even 30 or 40 dollars a piece for each one all right so depending on the company that comes out let's look at the motor the motor um not an expensive motor to be honest with you that's really cheap for ge um uh rotor motor all right that's 70.55 all right so actually this is the rotor so that's not what that is so the rotor is where the motor sits in that's number 630 right there i'm hoping you guys can see that as well I'm trying to pull it up a little bit 630 that's how much that is that's 7055 all right now if you're looking at the motor all right so your motor um the rotor is not a common issue um the motor can be um you're looking at 10340 um it's just like any other motor but these stators and rotors in my opinion are really durable they're more durable than the traditional motors that we're used to um, I, I don't replace them a lot, but I have replaced a few, but it's, it's, it's not common. I would say it's not a common issue, or if it is, it's like the last resort, like after the tech has checked everything, and then it's just a motor. But let's look at this. The motor is 10340. All right, so GE has a 10-year warranty on this particular part, which is the motor. That's number six 
Um, 36, hopefully you guys can see that as well. Um, 636 right there, that is the motor, all right? So it's 103.40, if you happen to need that, let's say that the technician say, man, this part is 150, labor you're looking at 150, you're looking at about 300 bucks, all right, to get that done. Uh, drain pump, man, this drain pump is really cheap. Drain pump, common issues, man, because stuff falls in on the inside of your, um, the washing machine because, you know, we don't always empty out our pockets fully. Um, you never know what's inside your clothes and it get trapped inside the motor, damage the blade. I've seen pennies in there. I've seen uh, pins in there. I've seen underwear, clothes, um, everything that you can think of, a pen, everything that you can think of that gets trapped inside this motor and damage the motor. But it's an inexpensive part. So you're looking at 37 57 So roughly I'll say this part, if you want to run it up to 50 bucks, labor 150, you're looking at at least 200 bucks to repair this unit. All right, it is a common issue. So you want to keep that in mind as well. All right, so the only thing that you can do as a customer is to make sure that whatever is in your pockets, you just try to get rid of those. All right, so it doesn't damage your motor. Another common issue is the washer inlet valves. These are common issues where your water valve and on here you have four solenoids. So each individual solenoid goes to individual portions of the washing machine. So you might have a pre-wash that needs water to go into it, a main wash, you have your hot water side, and then of course you have your bleach. All right, so it depends on how it's made, but it is a common issue for your water valves to either short out and allow water to just come in constantly or no water at all, but you have to replace the whole entire assembly as a kit. All right, so you're looking at $44.99. Part that's rounded up to about, if we even say this part is $100 because they're gonna charge you some money. So the part is $100, labor is $150, so you're looking at at least $250 to replace this part. All right, so you wanna keep that in mind as well. All right, so all right, so we got that done as far as that. Let's rock. Um, so we already talked about the wash plate already. Um, everything else, man. Um, washer thermostat, not a really um, common issue. So I'm just looking for stuff that's really common. We talk about the transmission. Oh, the control panel on here. That's number 13. The backsplash. So let's see if that comes with. Um, all right, I haven't done that. I'm actually getting ahead of myself, so my bad on that one. So let's finish up with this inner tub. Yeah, so I was wondering where that was going, so it was giving me more information that I needed. All right, so we just discussed the drain pump. Outside of that, that is it. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next portion of the video. You got your cabinet. If you happen to need your cabinet, we can really focus on the drain hose because, you know, if your cabinet needs to be replaced, um, from looking at it, they do not have a part number for the cabinet. But they do have a part number for your drain hose, and that's 825. So let's see what we got. Drain hose are common issues. Um, 825, you're looking at $18.99. Common issue because it can have a punctured hole in it. It can get clogged up. Um, it can wear out, stuff like that. So you just want to make sure if you happen to need one, if you're looking at the price, it's really inexpensive. It's looking at $18.99. So let's round this up real quick. Part is about $50. bucks. Labor is $150. You're looking at about $200 to replace your drain hose. All right? Again, common issue um, for um, the washing machine. All right, I think it's not much here. All right, so yeah, so that's it. So let's move on to the next joint. We're going to talk about the top panel and the lid. All right, so we've talked about the water valve already, so we can skip some of these and find out on some of these other, other joints. Let's see what we got. 380, 380, that's the top cover. It's 112.91. You don't really um, need the cover. It Normally what probably happened to the cover is cosmetics. It rust. Um, so that's normally what happens to the cover of the washing machine. So if you happen to need that, you're looking at $112.91. Technician come out to replace it. Let's round it up to about $200. Labor $150. You're looking at at least $350 if you happen to need it, if it's rusted and you need a new one. All right, let's go. Let's see what else we got. All right. Lever arm. Lid, lid lever arm. These wear out or the screw might be missing. They wear out. Um... But they're pretty durable though. All right, they wear out, but they're durable. It'll, it'll, it'll last you a long time. All right, so let's look at the actual glass frame assembly. And that's um, 
what we have here 394 so you're looking at 29360 that's how much that part cost so if you happen to need that you're going to spend at least 300 for it labor you're looking at 150 450 is really cheap so you're going to spend at least 500 dollars to replace that glass to replace the glass frame all right um so that's the top where you actually lift up the lid that whole entire lid you will have you're going to spend at least 500 dollars to repair that joint all right and i'm being real modest <laughs> because yeah they're going to cost you some bread um the dispenser drawer um again can wear out that's number um that's that 396 that's 401 so let's look at 401 real quick that's not the right one 401 oh, okay so your dispenser your dispenser drawer you can get that stuff yourself you do not need a technician to come out because you can actually pull those out and get them out yourself so if you happen to need that you just look it up online and purchase it yourself all right i did forget the washer lid lock so that's 395 I just want to make sure right here 395 if you happen to need a lid lock 395 um, that is $30.99 common issue for the lid lock or switch to burn to burn to short out um, again if you need that part you're looking at about 50 bucks label 150 you're looking at at least 200 right so not that expensive not that expensive all right so washer lid lock wire harness $23.99 not a common issue there at all right so so that's pretty good pretty good as far as that so let's go into like the controls the uh, control panel right these are the more expensive parts to see how much GE is gonna cost you because GE can be pretty expensive man to be honest with you they're real expensive all right so let's go the control panel 254.73 all right so that's number 13 if you need that whole entire panel right just the panel it doesn't even have the control board in it because as you can see the control board is number 35 and that's separate yeah you're looking at at least 254.73 300 dollars for the part labor 150 you're looking at at least 450 bucks all right let's look at the main control board Woo! Four, that's number 39 that's number 39 right up here so you're looking at at least four hundred dollars and thirty three cents so let's keep it at 400 because it's right there so you're looking at four hundred dollars for the part label 150 you're looking at at least 550 bucks I'm gonna be honest it's gonna be higher than that as you can see I'm only going to whatever the price of the part is on this side I didn't do any markup at all so you're gonna look at you're going to probably spend um, at least six all right so now that's when you're going to have to consider is it worth repairing because of the price of the part all right and that's a common issue as well all right so I want to keep that in mind all right let's see inverter board that's 39 okay so let me see all right so the inverter board is number 39 um, that's different. So the board that I talked about previously is number 35. All right, so this is your your main board here with everything that comes with it as an assembly. All right, so that's that's the 400 bucks. Now this is the inverter board, which is 39. All right, so that's 39. You're looking at 203.30. All right, so if that's 200, labor 150. You're looking at least 350. But again, that's on the low side, so at least 400. All right. At least 400 main harness um, let's see what else we got that's about it um, washer lid lock wire harness again we talked about that not a common issue um, yeah so we went over all the parts um, for this particular model on the GE um, top load wash machine man this is just the parts portion of the video um, as far as the parts man it's not that expensive to repair the parts of course the common issues that normally cost a lot of money um, live true to their name you know what I mean so they're gonna cost control boards gonna cost transmission is gonna cost motors gonna cost stuff like that as well but of course this is the parts portion of the video man and me it's me your boy you know I'm out of here man so we're gonna finish this joint peace all right so for this portion of the video of course we're going to focus on our overall review to let you know exactly how we feel about this ge top load wash machine 4.8 cubic feet all right so let's talk talk about the warranty 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 the manufacturer warranty 
As far as this particular washing machine, you're getting your standard one year warranty, both parts and labor. They're also giving you a 10 year warranty on the actual motor. No um, extended warranty for the labor, it just only applies to the part. So as far as the warranty grade that we're gonna give this particular appliance, uh, we'll give it a four because it's a little bit above average um, according to um, this particular wash machine. Some of them only give you the one year manufacturer warranty. This is, a, is at least giving you a little bit more so we're gonna give them a little, a little bit higher grade than usual for this particular one. So as far as the grade, of course you know we're gonna give it a four. All right, so the next thing we're gonna focus on is the price. How much it's gonna cost you? Might cost you a little, might cost you a lot. Either way, it's gonna cost you. Man, let's talk about price. So roughly you're talking about at least, I would say between 800 to a thousand dollars, depending on the color that you get. If you're getting the diamond gray, that's gonna cost you a little bit more in comparison to getting the white. The white is a little bit cheaper as well. You can find just a little bit of sale here and there, probably about 10%, depending on what site you go to. Um, also, you wanna factor in availability as well. Um, as far as the price grade, man, I've seen appliances that's compatible to this particular unit, either having the same capacity, a little bit more, and you can get it for a little bit less that comes with a little bit more options, all right? So there's a Samsung one that's a top load unit that's giving you actual steam function on there as well. Um, you have different models that might give you a little bit more for your buck. So as far as the grade and price grade that we're gonna give this joint, we're just gonna give it an average of three. Um, that's all we can give it. We don't really wanna bring it down but too much, but we'll give it about a three and that's about it. But like I said, in our opinion, you can probably get a little bit more, um, a better appliance as far as pricing, so you can do some more searching around just to see what you'll get. All right, let's talk about it. What else we got on here, man? Let's talk about the parts. Man, so again, this unit is about $800 to $1,000. On average, you're gonna spend at least no less than $300 um, per repair on this particular unit. So as far as the evaluation on that, depending on how much you get the, the appliance for, so um, that grade will give you a little bit of that as well. But one of the most common issues that typically goes bad on this particular model or make it's the actual transmission or the gear case that allows the unit to agitate or spin. You also have the shifter as well. Um, different models might call it an actuator, but that's the same exact thing where it shifts from wash to spin. That's a lot of, um, that's a common issue as well. So for this particular unit, as far as durability, when we're talking about the parts and, and stuff, drain pump going bad as well, in this particular unit, man, as far as the grade that we're gonna give the parts, Factoring average parts per repair, at least being over 300 bucks, we're gonna give it about a three. All right, and, that's, and that is it. That's all we can actually give it. So let's focus on the functions and the features. You know this is my favorite part here, man, when we're talking about this appliance. One of the things that we like on this appliance, of course, that it has the stain removal where that you can actually use and select different stains between blood, you can select between grass stains and dirt, so you can be specific. Of course, they want you to pre-treat it before you actually go ahead and select these different settings. That's the setting that we actually love on this particular model, that you can actually pre-treat it and then the machine will eventually finish out the rest of the machine, depending on the option that you selected, depending on the dirt, all right? So that's good there. Um, another thing that we like on here is the deep fill, right? So uh, traditionally with the new appliances, these machine does not fill up with a lot of water, but you can actually use a deep fill function that allows you to fill up the water as much as you would like um, as far as the traditional look. So it looks like your clothes is getting clean. I really like that a lot when it has the deep fill in there. So we really like that option as well. I think that's pretty cool. It comes with the sanitizer with Oxy as well that you'll be able to sanitize and clean your clothes pretty well. We love that. Um, it kills about 99.9% .9 of bacteria. So we love that option that you see there as well. They have different functions and stuff that you can use. They have a bulky setting that you can actually use for comforters. So if you're interested in washing comforters, I suggest you watch the uh, functions and features and portion of this video. And also we're gonna put the owner's manual in it as well so that you'll be able to see that. Um, Outside of it, I'm just trying to remember um, anything else that comes to mind when we're dealing with this machine. Oh, we love the pod, right? So you have an actual dispenser that you pull out that you can actually put the pods in specifically if you wanna put it in there rather than put it in the detergent. 
that says uh, powder and liquid. All right, so we love that option there. I think that's pretty slick. We really, really like it. In this particular model, you can get more stuff added to it, but we're just gonna focus on this particular one. So the functions and features for this one, we're gonna actually give it an actual four. All right, so let's round up and tally all the grades that we have given, man, to this particular unit. We start off with the warranty, we gave it a four. Let's start off um, the four. So we also started off with the, uh, the uh, functions and features. We gave that a four. We also gave the parts grade a three. And we also gave the price a three. So when you add all it up together, man, you're talking about a grade of 14 divided by four. You're looking at a 3.5. So yes, that's the grade we're actually giving this particular appliance right now. Um, again, we like certain things about it, but this is not a good machine in our opinion. Uh, we also have the Samsung one that we did that we actually gave a four to and we also recommend, so you wanna check that one out as well. Um, of course, you already know, man, we're gonna be honest, and yes, we're not recommending this appliance. I just wanna make sure I put that out there. Um, there's other appliances that we'll recommend that's better than this particular one. So sorry, GE, all right? Of course, it's me, your boy, Richie Rich, at Consumer Plan Support. You help me, I help you, we both help each other. Till next time, you already know what time it is. It's me, your boy, and I'm out. Peace. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel.